Hi! I have not posted a video in a long time and for that I'm really sorry but I've been extremely busy and um, just enjoying and living life. I am now two years um, no evidence of disease or NED as we like to call it in the cancer survivor circles and I'm just really excited about that. I had my last scans in June. It's 2021. And they came back with no evidence of disease. So in case you're following and tracking, there's two different cancers that I'm fighting. One was a rectal tumor and the other was neuroendocrine cancer of the right lung. So after enduring a lot of chemo and radiation and surgeries and liver surgery and some pretty hairy radiation and chemo or chemo that I lost all my hair, which now I have it up in a bun. So you can see that that's grown back. Anyway, after all of that, um, to be Ned for two years is awesome. It's just awesome. We celebrated with a trip to Cabo um, despite COVID, we took 10 people and went and partied in Cabo for a week, which was fabulous. And um, this post is really because I've been procrastinating with crafting and Relay for Life events and quilting and all the other things that I do to keep myself busy. I've been procrastinating on um, writing a book. I have a Facebook uh, page that I post a lot of my cancer journey on and it's, you know, every now and then I post something and people really respond positively and I say, you should write a book, you should write a book. So I've been thinking about it and I've been trying to get motivated to go back to it. I have quite a bit written, but I need to go back to it and keep working on it. And so in trying to get motivated, I decided I would, uh, buy a book on how to write a book, which I did, and I will do a little book review on that at some point, especially if I eventually get published. Maybe, hooray, it's a great book if it helps me get published. But anyway, then I started thinking about all the cancer books that I read while I was sick. And a lot of people would say, oh, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't read a cancer book while you have cancer. You know, it's bound to be bad and scary and that's not why I did it. I did it for encouragement. I did it for someone else's story, for someone else's perspective, for hope, for just um, a lot, I don't know, a lot of different reasons. But um, some of the books I read were from survivors and some were not. Um, two books, I believe, were published posthumously. So, Anyway, I'll get into that later. I did read quite a few books while I was sick and they did do things for me in different ways. But today I wanted to do a little quick book review of one of the first books I read while I was sick, which was Lance Armstrong's book, It's Not About the Bike. This is the book. And I know a lot of people have a lot of different um, opinions about Lance Armstrong and some very strong opinions about him and the fact that he, after winning all these uh, Tour de France competitions, revealed or was discovered that he had taken steroids or taken some um, strength enhancing things. And I wanna just go out there and say, it doesn't matter. It's not, about the, it's not about the bike. It's not about Tour de France. It's not about any of that. It's about cancer. and. This book and, and Lance Armstrong's story is one of the most powerful ones that I read. Um, he was diagnosed with metastatic testicular cancer with large tumors in his lungs when he was first diagnosed. And I believe there were brain tumors at some point in this battle as well. So, and he's still with us. So if you're, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer and I was terrified. And I knew, I mean, you don't go into a cancer battle knowing all of the celebrities that have ever, you know, fought cancer and all the people that have written books about it. You just kind of go, okay, you know, where do I go? What do I do? 
and you're in a little bit of a panic mode. And I did know Lance's story because it had been publicized so broadly when he was ill. Everybody remembers the yellow Livestrong bracelets that were disseminated widely and he started um, the Livestrong Foundation and just a lot of publicity went into that story. So right off the bat, I knew about him. And I think that was the first thing I did as I went to Amazon and bought his book and started reading it. And stage four to stage four, it was inspirational because I knew, I knew reading this book, it would not be a horror story of um, him being defeated by cancer because he was still living when I bought the book. So I, I needed that. I needed that encouragement. I needed that um, hope. And this book gave it to me. It's very well written. It, it does involve, the involvement of the story touched me um, more deeply than I thought it would because of his upbringing. And, you know, he had some uh, connections in Texas and I have some connections in Texas and his upbringing and just, you know, flying through the streets on his bicycle when he was young and kind of owning the town. And that's what we did when we were kids. And uh, we just kind of like owned the neighborhood. We were always outside. We were always on our bikes. We were always playing kick the can in the street. And I could relate to his upbringing on that level. And he had a very close um, relationship with his mother, which I also thought was very inspiring. My mother, um, and I got closer as years went on. We fought a lot when I was a teenager, but I don't know any girl who doesn't fight with her mother when they're a teenager. But she was inspirational to me too, and very supportive in my adult life. So those things hit a connection with me. And, um, you know, there's, there's some love story things in there and there's some relationship things in his book. And there are stories about different competitions that he was in and how he tried to recover from treatments and regain strength. And those struggles are in the book as well. But bottom line, this book really gave me a source of encouragement and hope because I read it early in the game. And, you know, it's, it's not, it's not about the bike. It's not about what he did with Tour de France. It's, it's about cancer. So on that note, I'm just gonna get on my little soapbox for a second and, and talk about the blame game on cancer. I'm just kind of over it, you know, to be blunt. Um, cancer's a disease, cancer's a horrible disease, cancer kills, bottom line. And nobody goes up to a cancer patient, I hope, deliberately trying to shame them or make them feel responsible for their cancer. But it seems like, you know, that inevitably comes up in every single cancer patient's story is some level of, well, okay, maybe I shouldn't have taken birth control pills or maybe I should have eaten better or maybe I should have lost weight or maybe I should have you know, um, gotten this vaccination or not gotten this vaccination, or maybe I shouldn't have taken steroids, or maybe my asthma medication did this and I should have had better asthma medication, or, you know, on and on and on and on and on. There's like a thousand different things. And uh, basically, maybe you should have picked better parents. You know, it's genetically linked in a lot of cases. Do people shame cancer patients because of the choice of their parents? I don't think so, I hope not. But um, Lance Armstrong comes to mind when I discuss the shaming of a cancer patient or the blame game because of his um, strength enhancing things. And I, I don't even remember off the top of my head what it was that he was accused of, but there have been people saying, oh, well, you know, if he hadn't done that, he wouldn't have gotten cancer. If he hadn't, you know, and it's like, really? Really? Cancer's cancer. We are living in an imperfect world that, you know, environment, genetics, whatever it is, lifestyle can contribute to a disease that kills. And so to, to blame somebody for their own illness, I don't think anybody, even, even, and I go so far as to say, 
the, the, per, the, the group that is probably the most shamed in the cancer community is a lung cancer patient. And, you know, oh, well, you must have smoked or you shouldn't have smoked or maybe you should have stopped smoking sooner or whatever. And really, does it matter? Is there anything that can be said or done or shown to a cancer patient that will make them feel worse about what they already know they did or didn't do that could have contributed to them being sick at that point? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just leave it alone. Don't say it. Don't think it because there's nothing worse than blaming yourself and getting stuck in that trap of, oh, maybe I should have done this. Maybe I should have done that. And it doesn't do anybody any good. You are moving forward from the point of the illness. You are not going back in time. There's nothing that you can do or undo in your past. You, you can't. My mother had a saying that she said to me um, one time when I was struggling some, with something when I was younger. And she said, um, regret is a stupid emotion. Just regret is stupid. And regret is stupid because if you know you shouldn't do something because you're going to regret it, don't do it. It's that simple. And if you regret something that you've already done, then that's stupid too because you can't go back and undo it. Apologize make amends with yourself if your offense is with yourself and, and move on with your life because you can't undo it. And if you know you're going to regret it, don't do it in the first place. So it is a stupid emotion. It's a stupid thing to get bogged down in regret. So just don't go there. From the point of diagnosis, just move forward. Just move forward. Don't beat yourself up. There's nothing that you can do about the past. Don't beat yourself up. You can move forward and you can't go after the big cannons that will fight the cancer and give you the best lifestyle for however long you have. If it's a year, if it's 20 years, if it's 40 years, you don't know, but move forward. And, you know, anybody who's blaming Lance Armstrong or blaming anybody who has lung cancer or blaming anybody who has any kind of cancer should just reevaluate re your own life and, you know, just, you know, pray to God every single day that you don't get stricken with an illness where you will have to examine your own life after you've blamed other people for where they end up because it, it doesn't do anybody any good. So moving forward from that, um, I... I know someone from my childhood who um, struggled with and overcame testicular cancer. And this individual didn't do any kind of um, uh, strength enhancing anything ever. So I, for one, don't think it had anything to do with Lance Armstrong's um, medical case or medical history. And I never would have thought that to begin with, but I do have that personal experience with that friend of mine, so I really don't believe it. And if you're going to um, not buy his book because you disagreed with what he did with those um, strength strengthening um, things, whatever he did, then I think it's a shame. You're missing out on a fabulous book that's inspirational and full of wisdom, full of hope and encouragement. So... And that's what I needed, and it, and this book delivered. It delivered wholeheartedly, and I enjoyed the um, interpersonal relationships that he talked about. I particularly enjoyed his discussions on um, his choice of doctors and hospitals and treatment plans. He didn't just go with uh, the oncologist that his doctor recommended. He didn't just go with the local hospital that everybody was all gun ho for. He went, he, he did some analysis. He did his homework. He made his own choices and he knew that whatever the outcome was, he was going to be the one that had to live with it. And that's what I encourage everyone to do as well. Take that from his book, um, the power of being able to choose your own treatment team, your own dream team. Um, I did it. I fired my first medical oncologist. I fired my gastroenterologist, um, chose a, a new one, a better one, uh, one that had, in my opinion, way better interpersonal skills. Um, just 
just take the takeaway from this book is, you know, hope and empowerment of, you know, treatment, making your own choices, and the fact that he literally overcame advanced metastatic cancer. So anyway, I hope that you pick up this book and read it for yourself. I hope that it provides you with the same inspiration and the same hope that it provided me with because those early days of being stage four diagnosed were absolutely terrifying. I just celebrated my four year cancerversary from diagnosis and the, the um, prognosis for stage four of the particular cancer that I was diagnosed with at the time that I was diagnosed was 15% survival past five years. And I am still here and it's been four years and I'm planning on being here well past five. So I'm gonna be in that 15%, which I think the statistics have changed now and it's more like 33%. And that's just in a couple of years. So that's encouraging too, that um, such advances were made in just a few years where the statistics moved up. But anyway, he's the book is excellent, excellent writing. Um, just very hopeful, very encouraging book. Um, if you're looking for that sort of thing, I hope you pick it up. It's an easy read. It's not complicated. It's not too bogged down in medical terms. It's an easy read. And really, really, really encouraging for people who are going through stage four cancer or any kind of cancer for that matter. And let's stop the blame game because it's not okay. Any kind of, uh, just even a look if you're talking to a, a lung cancer patient that smoked most of their life, just going, mm. you know, that's not okay. It's not okay. You move forward from today. You move forward from the diagnosis. You think that cancer patient doesn't know that what they did may have contributed to their illness? They know. They don't need you to disapprove of them. They don't need you to make them feel bad. They know. They know painfully well. So let's drop the blame game. Let's move forward that, you know, cancer is the disease that it is and that it strikes anyone, anyone. And let's take care of ourselves. So anyway, let's take care of ourselves and each other. I hope you pick up the book. I got mine, I believe on Amazon. It's excellent. This guy, survivor. I'm a survivor and you can be a survivor and let's just all get out there and support each other. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope to post more of these little um, book reviews because some of these books were really, really, really helpful to me. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, hit the like button, um, send me a comment on whether or not you've read this book, what you thought of it. Um, any, any comment at all, um, how the hair looks now that it's grown in and it's so hot on my neck, I stick it up because I don't want to get too hot. Learned how to do this hairstyle in Cabo, which kept me cool in Cabo. And I'm going to be posting some of the videos from Cabo because I went snorkeling and it was fabulous. Anyway, I will see you guys hopefully soon and more frequently. Thanks for watching. Bye.